I'm Caswell Cook here at Mohegan Sun Casino in Uncasville, Connecticut for the 60s Pop Reunion featuring Peter Noon of Herman's Hermits and Tommy James and the Shondells. Hi, I'm Caswell Cook, and welcome to the Caswell Cook Show. Tonight, 
We're here, actually, in a hotel room at Mohegan Sun Casino with Tommy James. Tommy, welcome to our show. How are you doing? Nice I'm to doing do, well. Nice to be here. Well, thank you for doing our show. We very much appreciate it. My pleasure. I, I learned a lot about you on your website, TommyJames.com. You don't believe everything you read. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a good way for you to keep in touch with all the fans all around the world. Absolutely. So how long have you had the website? Well, it's been up and running for about a year and a half now. And, uh, you know, we've had uh, such great contact with people from all over the world. And, of course, it's got, it's just TommyJames.com, you know, real simple. And um, We'll put that up on the screen. <laughs> okay. And, uh, you know, it's got our tour dates and what we're doing and the new stuff we're doing, and uh, as well as the older stuff with uh, snippets of all the albums and uh, every cut from every album, actually. So you're on the road a lot. Well, we're on the road about 30 dates a year, actually. Um, we try to space it out so that uh, it's basically from you know, March through September, basically, for us. And uh, uh, we're doing a lot of other things, though. Um, you got some new projects you're working we on. We do, indeed. Christmas I, album. Yeah, Christmas single to start with, actually, called I Love Christmas. That's going to be uh, out this Christmas year. And we're doing it in a new way. We're actually MP3-ing it out to radio. And uh, we need something innocuous like a Christmas record to do this so that... Uh, uh, the Christmas programming will, will be there, and uh, the broadcasters will need music for Christmas, so we're going to MP3 it to them. Now, you're, now, the band that you tour with, is this the band that's, that's with you on the album? Uh, yes, basically. The, uh, uh, the fellows that are in the group now have been with me for about 15 years, and uh, they're all real choice players, and uh, um, you know, I like them a lot. They're good, good fellows. So when does the, uh, when does the album, when, we, when are we looking? Well, honestly, this is going to be, this is a very new thing for us to do, uh, uh, to do it electronically. You know, we're not going to press CDs and send it to radio. It's going to be all done uh, literally by email and MP3 files. And every radio station across the country, that's, uh, every music station is going to have the record. And we're going to uh, uh, have it downloadable from iTunes uh, exclusively. And uh, so we'll see what happens. So if our audience goes to TommyJames.com, they'll be able to figure it out. Oh, yes. Yes, we'll make it very clear. you got some other things you're working on now. That's true. Well, there's a new television show called American Jukebox. Where's that going to air? I, well, that's going to hopefully be up and running by September of 05. And uh, I am one of the hosts on the show. We have several hosts. And uh, uh, our production company is producing the show, and we're going to do it... Uh, through New Line Cinema's new television department, through Tribune Broadcasting. And uh, this is really exciting for us because, uh, you know, we've never done television before. But we really feel that, um, and by the way, it's a weekly rock and roll magazine, and we really feel that rock and roll has to make the move to television because uh, that's where the people are. Mm -hmm. And it's the last great campfire that we all sit around and talk, you know. And uh, I'm afraid if it doesn't do that, it's going to sort of go the way of vaudeville and uh, rock and roll could go the way of the big bands. Right? Not if you keep staying out there on tour. Well, you know, we just, we sort of go back and forth. Um, uh, honestly, uh, uh, our touring should be done by September and then uh, uh, we have the rest of the year to do what we need to do. So now when, when we see you in concert tonight, what are we going to look for for the songs? We've got, we got some of the new stuff that you're going to do for well, us Well, you tonight? know what, we're, tonight... Because there's so many acts on the show, it's really, the, the show tonight, it's interesting. This is a condensed version of the PBS show we did uh, that was broadcast uh, earlier this year all, all across PBS, the network. And uh, five of the seven acts are with us tonight, uh, uh, including, including myself. Um, Chad and Jeremy, um, uh, the Buckinghams, mm -hmm. the Grassroots, and Peter Noon and Herman's Hermits. So it's, uh, uh, you know, it's going to be a lot of hits, um, and it's a, a condensed version of the 60s pop reunion that was on PBS. So uh, I hope everybody enjoy, uh, enjoys it. As to your question, we're going to be doing shorter, condensed versions of our show. So we're only going to be doing about 45 or 50 minutes tonight. All the hits. Yeah, as many as we can cram into uh, 50 minutes. Now let me ask you a question. Now you started out when you were young. I yeah. mean, you were you were a kid when Very you first young. when you first near birth. That's right. You were born in '67. That's right. 
So now all these years later, you're on the road and you go out on stage and I, and I, I go to see people. Like last night I saw the Beach Boys and I'm watching Mike Love and, and I talked to him once now, and I'm wondering what he's Aren't thinking. Aren't you glad they're still working? Oh, absolutely. I love those And guys. Brian Wilson's coming back with the Smile Tour this Is fall. Is he really? Is that definite? <laughs> absolutely, Isn't yeah. Isn't it great? And, um, and I, I got to interview Brian once, but when I asked him, I said, Pet Sounds, the greatest album of all time. I said, what was that like? It was a good album. Yeah. And that was it. Well, you're lucky he didn't ask you what your name was. That's right. <laughs> but he's good. But I'm, I'm, wa <laughs> I'm watching these guys on stage, you know. I'm watching Paul McCartney sing Hey Jude. And I'm thinking, okay, they wrote those songs a long time ago. Now, when you're singing a song that you wrote way back in the 60s, and here it is, the year 2004, does it take you back in time? Are you thinking something totally else, something else? But what goes through your mind when you sing My Baby Does the Hanky Panky? Well, let me say this. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> well, listen, doing those songs is great because, uh, honestly, um, you know, rock and roll does keep you young, and it does, and, the, you know, the fans are so great because, uh, you know, they're the ones that uh, keep the uh, engine going, yep. you know. And I look out into our concert crowd now, and I see literally three generations of fans and uh, that don't know each other necessarily, but they know the music. And so it's very gratifying, and, you know, I'm really very flattered by it. So when, when you recorded uh, Hanky Panky, I, I remember reading this now, you recorded it, and it was two years until that song That's became true. a hit? Yeah, I recorded it in high school. And uh, we did it in my little hometown of Niles, Michigan, uh, at the radio station literally in the radio studio, WNIL. This was in 19, early 1964. And, um, you were three. I was three and right. a half. And uh, uh, actually, I was uh, uh, in 64, I was a uh, <clears throat> junior in high school. Graduated in 65 and um, took my band on the road. Well, the record came out and was number one in six square blocks and then died in 1964 because we couldn't, you know, get, we were in between Chicago and Detroit and right. we couldn't do either one. So uh, we kind of forgot about the record and went out on the road and I came back very depressed and out of work in uh, early 1966. What did you get paid for a gig back then? Oh, I think the whole band made like, you know, $2,000 a week or something like that. It was... Split five you know, or six Oh, that was before inflation, you know. You right, know right. Yeah, which meant we made about nine cents a piece. And so I came back and uh, back to my hometown and uh, we sort of got a local, you know, got work at a local club and um, all of a sudden, a week later, my phone rings and uh, it's a disc jockey from Pittsburgh. And I've often thought, what if I hadn't been home? You talk about, the, you know, the man upstairs running the show. He really did this one. And uh, I got this call that your, your record is sitting at number one. And I remember my life just kind of stopped right there. I said, what do you mean? Well, uh, through a weird sequence of events, one copy of the record ended up in Pittsburgh and on the radio station and immediately shot. They bootlegged uh, Hanky Panky and, and sold 80,000 of them in 10 days and we were sitting at number one. Wow. That's a true story. And, um, you know, it sounds like a press agent made it up, but, it, but it's true. So I, I went to Pittsburgh. I couldn't put the original band back together. They didn't want to go play Hanky Panky, you know. So we went, I went to Pittsburgh alone and grabbed the first bar band I could find to be the Shondells. And uh, we then went to New York a week later and uh, signed with Roulette Records, and that was the beginning. So it was just totally out of left field. Chris wants to know our cameraman, our famous cameraman. He wants to know how you got that sound effect in Crimson and Clover. How'd you get your voice to do that? <laughs> Well, I did. That did actually that? was no, 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 no. Didn't have a guy shaking me or anything. No, that was uh, just uh, we mic'd, we put the microphones through a guitar amplifier. Actually, um, I turned on the tremolo and just uh, got it in the sequence or the uh, rhythm of the music, and then mic'd the amplifier and ran it back into the board. So it was really a very simple thing. It was just tremolo from a guitar amp. You've got the real answer here on the That's Casual the Cook Show. <laughs> <laughs> now, the one thing that you did, though, is, as I understand that your manager said you probably shouldn't play that place called Woodstock. Uh -huh. Is that true? Yeah, well, it is true. We were... Actually, but, you know, I don't know if... I, I've gotten a lot of mileage out of the story, probably more than if we'd have played. I, you know, uh, we were... This is the summer of 69, and we were at the uh, a foot of Diamond Head, literally, in Hawaii. We were 
in a 22-room villa, a Spanish mansion at the foot of Diamond Head. And uh, we were there for two weeks, the whole band, you know, we were playing there. And uh, had this two-week period of time off, and uh, I get this call from New York as my secretary, and she said, listen, there's this uh, gig in upstate New York, uh, this uh, farmer's, it's a pig farm. And I said, what? She said, yeah, your agency called and there's some big gig up at a pig farm in upstate New York. I said, wait a minute. You're asking me to leave paradise and fly 6,000 miles to play a pig farm? Said, well, yeah. <laughs> I said, well, forget it. So uh, by Thursday of that week, we knew we messed up really bad. We, <laughs> so we, saw, <laughs> we saw the New York freeway shut down and... Uh, uh, you know, we knew we had, uh, we'd blown it pretty bad, but uh, hey, what are you going to do? You've had your songs covered countless times by, by a million people, but obviously two of the biggest ones were, were Tiffany and, um, and uh, Billy Idol. And, and the, the funny story I, I, I read about that was that Tiffany was at number one and then Moni Moni knocked off, one of your other songs knocked off that song. Yeah, it was, well, you know, this is back in 87 where... Um, uh, Billy Idol and Tiffany were battling it out for number one with two of our songs. I couldn't believe it. It was, uh, uh, you know, that really had never happened before and I was really amazed by it. Um, you know, we kept watching the records go up and they went top 40, top 30, top 20, and finally at number one. And uh, I can't remember which went number one first. Tiffany. Was it Tiffany? Thank you. Because I was 13 You then. did your homework, yeah, right? right? Okay. Uh, and then, um, and then Mo she had I think we're alone now. And then Billy Idol had Moni Moni, and uh, you know we just couldn't believe it. So when some of the younger people come to your show, do they say, "Wow, I like it when you do that Billy Idol song"? Yeah. What are you doing <laughs> Tiffany's record for? What's the matter with you? Uh, <laughs> so uh, anyway, but you know, really, I'm very honored by it. When, when someone wants to cover your song, like I read, Cher did one of your songs. Mm -hmm.